The Traveler's back? Nahida was controlling your body for a while. It seemed like she jumped over to you as an emergency measure right before the Catherine puppet was destroyed. After that, Tainari heard the commotion and came over. He helped us defeat the mercenaries and then he ran with us all the way here. What? You swapped places? You mean your consciousness also went into Nahida's body? Wait, then where is Nahida's consciousness? Where is she now? <sighs> I never imagined that an individual's consciousness could be transferred around like this. Had I not seen it with my own eyes, I would have never believed it. I don't think this can be achieved with current human technology. Also, while we were running, the consciousness in your body told me to pass on a message. She said, The doctor has found a way to trap my consciousness. So I can't journey with you anymore. But even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. <sighs> oh no! He is trapped in the sanctuary of Surus Donna for good this time! Was that message all she left for us? It's pretty vague. Since the doctor captured her, she won't be able to say anything without him knowing. She's being extra careful. Even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. Huh. Paimon knows the moon illusions and lies are from that alchemical divination at the Subzeru's festival. Didn't Nahida use a starlight analogy before? It had something to do with Sataria. said Sanctuary of Surasthana. Does this mean that this Nahida you're talking about, the consciousness who was occupying the Traveler's body, is the Dendro Archon? Uh, your guess is correct, but the situation's a bit complicated, so it's really hard for us to explain right now. That's all right. A scholar's curiosity doesn't need to be appeased right away. As for the complicated nature of the situation, Safe to say, I have witnessed that for myself. I've spent some time with you, and it looks like the Dendro Archon's also on your side, so... I trust you. Thank you, Tainari! Oh, actually, we came here to ask you a question. What do you know about the project that the Sages have been working on? Ah, that... While I was indeed invited to join that project, the Sages were always secretive about its scope and goals. So I eventually declined. All I know is that that project has something to do with the restoration of Ermensol. Huh? Did you see something when you were in Nahida's body? What? Do you have any evidence? So that's what happened. That explains why Hypatia's symptoms were different from those of the other scholars who went mad. 
it's because she made contact with the consciousness of a new god who is still in the process of being born. Kainari, did you leave the Avidia Forest because of Apasia? I did. I noticed Apasia's mental anomalies, but since her symptoms were rather atypical, I secretly took her to Parties Di and began searching for a way to return her to her normal self. If I didn't take action, Hapasia would have already been taken by the Matra to the desert, doomed to a life of exile at Aru Village. Now that you mention it, I knew the Academia has never thought particularly highly of Lesser Lord Kusanali, but... But I still didn't expect them to do something as arrogant as creating a new god. Looks like I made the right decision by not accepting their invitation. The Doctor and the Balladeer. We have two Fatui Harbingers in Sumeru. Sounds like we're in for a bad time. From your description, I don't think they've completed their project. There may still be room for us to intervene. But then, what is the connection between creating a new god and restoring Ermansoul? Yeah, it feels like we're still nowhere close to figuring out the sage's goals. Right, we've pretty much gone over everything we need to know, so we should head out. How about you, Tainari? What are you going to do? I'll stay here for now. I still want to try a few more things to help Papasia. If you're planning to go into the desert, start by heading for Caravan Rabat. That'll be your fastest route. Come find me here if there's anything else I can do to help. May the Spirit of Wisdom go with you. Thanks, Tainari. Hopefully Papasia will feel better soon. We're off then.
to oblige. New punching Lucky bag. today. <sighs> Take that. lively here. So, just past this wall is the desert, huh? Oh, wow. Paimon remembers hearing people call this the Wall of Samiel. It's made to block sandstorms from the outside. Oh, if it's this tall, it's gotta be the divine work of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, right? Enough gawking. Come on, follow me. Over here. Oh, he's went that way! Let's hurry up and follow him. Wonder what he's up to. What the... Where did he go? Ugh, how did we lose him? They were just here a second ago. More Aramite mercenaries? Who are they working for this time? Ugh, anyway, Traveler, it seems like we were being followed again. You were too careless. You should have noticed those hopeless amateurs trailing you a long time ago. There's no need to thank me. I've never cared to keep track of personal favors. All I did was correct a mistake I happened to come across. It's a habit I developed at the Academia. You really gave Paimon a scare, I'll hate them. We never thought we'd run into you here. Last time we met at Poor Ormos, didn't you say you were going back to the Academia? <gasps> Wait, don't tell Paimon that you're here to take us back on their orders. Oh. So you've already landed yourselves on the Academia's hit list. <laughs> I can't say that I didn't expect it. However, had I wished to turn you over to the Academia, don't you think you'd already be the Eremite's honored guests by now? Oh, right. Um, you do have a point. <laughs> I have no interest in running errands for that project. As a scholar, I've always belonged to the camp that promotes researcher autonomy. And these days, you're more fascinating than anything the sages can offer. Hmm, not quite. To tell you the truth, I'm still investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Unfortunately, 
I've run into some difficulties. Everyone says the capsule originated in the desert and was eventually moved to Port Ormos. If I am to get to the bottom of this, I must understand how the capsule first came to be. Which brings me back to you and why you're so interesting. The leader of Ainul Ahmar used the Divine Knowledge Capsule right in front of you, and upon seeing him, your expression became perplexed, and you were lost in thought for quite some time. To have that kind of reaction, I think you must have realized something. Are you interested at all in sharing what you've been hiding from me? Oh, hey, Thum. You really have a ridiculous eye for detail. What kind of person even notices or remembers stuff like that? So that's your answer. Hmm. <laughs> well, I do work for the Academia after all. So considering that, it is indeed wise to keep your cards close to your chest. But that does prove you do have some undisclosed information about the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Am I right? <sighs> no matter. Rather than simply learning the answers from you, I'd still prefer to investigate on my own. Speaking of, you two are also headed to the desert? That's right! We have the same plan as you! But we don't really have any concrete goals at the moment. Then I'd suggest starting with Aru Village. It's the largest settlement in the desert, so it'll probably have more resources and intel than anywhere else. Well, would you like to head there together? It's always better to travel with someone you know. Let's go! A reward on the road. Before us lies Aru Village, the safe haven of the desert folk. Whoa, this landscape is really something else. What a cool place! Let's go check it out! Ha <laughs> 
Unless my memory fails me, we have barely spoken two words to each other before now at the Academia. Would you care to enlighten me as to when and how I invited the General Mahamatra's wrath? Oh, Haytham. Do not think you can escape my judgment just because you managed to escape my attack. <laughs> judgment? So that's how you'd characterize your actions here, is it? Or would elimination perhaps be a more accurate description? Had I used my full strength, not even this Traveler would have been able to stop me. Though styled like an assassination, I sought only to ensure that my target would be unable to flee or resist. Standard practice for the Matra, as well you know. Seemed to me more like your own personal touch. Uh, who, who is that, Alhatham? Did you call him General Mahamatra? Yes. General Mahamatra Sino, head of all the Matra at the Academia. He's a formidable hunter, and the ultimate nightmare for any who have committed academic crimes. You seem to have placed a lot of trust in Al Haytham, to the point of blocking an attack for him. If I were you, I'd never choose to side with him. I wouldn't believe a single word that comes out of his mouth. I have been pursuing this scribe for a long time. I urge you, stand back and do not seek to defend him any longer. Otherwise, there will be consequences. Has Alhatham done something wrong? Hyman doesn't think he's as bad as you've made him out to be. I won't waste my breath explaining things. Alhatham. I saw it during our fight. Take it out. The divine knowledge capsule you're hiding on your person. Unless you want me to retrieve it for myself. Hmm. <laughs> Very perceptive of you. Nothing escapes Amatra's senses. Wait! The divine knowledge capsule? Didn't it fall into the Matra's hands in Port Ormo? No wonder you speak with such confidence, Sino. But I must admit, I'm very curious. What does this capsule mean to you? And why, as General Mahamatra of the Academia, are you all alone in the desert? As far as I'm aware, the other Matra have been speculating about your disappearance. Have you been given a mission that's, let's say, morally dubious? If I was the real target of your mission, what was stopping you from simply using your authority and resources to judge me within the walls of the Academia? <sighs> I should have known you'd be difficult to deal with. You two! Ugh. What should we do, Traveler? Paimon feels like we can't trust either of them! Ahem. <clears throat> well, look at you two, acting all tough and self-righteous over there. Wait! Otherwise, these two are gonna start fighting again! Yeah, sure looks that way. Two giants from the Academia duking it out once and for all. Not something you get to see every day, that's for sure. Listen, I know you academic types love to fill up your big brains with self-righteous morality and lord your empty rules and virtues over each other. But how dare you bring your petty disputes into the safe haven of Aru Village? It seems like someone's gonna have to beat some sense into your thick skulls until you finally learn to respect these grounds. <sighs> hey, did either of you hear a word I just said? Whoa. 
What's going on? The wind's so strong. Is this a sandstorm? Paimon's gonna get blown away! Another sandstorm? What's up with these recently? Hey! All of you, over here, quickly! We have to take cover! Someone's calling for us! Oh, this wind is too strong! Let's get over there! That sounded like Candace. Uh, come on, you two. Jeez, are all of you academia folks such hard work? Move it! All right, stop yelling. Well, this is pretty awkward. <laughs> hey, want to play sardines with three people who want to tear each other limb from limb? <laughs> sure, why not? Sounds fun. Uh, the air is so thick and heavy. Paimon can hardly keep floating anymore. My sincere apologies, everyone. This is the home of our village chief. I will have to ask you to make do with this small room until the sandstorm dies down. Please, let me introduce myself. I am Candace, protector of Aru Village. Ah, our savior has come at last! Nice to meet you, Candace. The name's Paimon. Thank you so much for helping us. <laughs> There's no need to thank me. It's only right to help each other when the weather gets rough. Wow, she's so gentle and caring, like a nice older sister. I'm like those guys over there. All right. Now that we're all better acquainted, we should return to the topic at hand. As a guardian charged with the responsibility to protect my fellow villagers from harm, I was observing your conflict from afar, even before the sandstorm started. And now that you have set foot within our village itself, it is all the more my responsibility to make absolutely sure that you pose no threat whatsoever to us. So please. Have an honest and sincere conversation with one another, and put your hostile feelings to rest. If anyone dares to start anything again while they are under this roof, I will not hesitate to send them out for some quality time with the creatures of the Sandstorm. Oh! Uh, on second thought, Paima may have misjudged Candace's character. Hm. And that goes for you too, Miss Dia. Do I make myself clear? <sighs> All right, we got it, Candace. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So, which of you will begin? I was supposed to be a mediator, but uh, I might have gotten a little too involved just now. Anyway, one of those two should probably start talking. Wait, that was you trying to be a mediator? <sighs> I have nothing to hide, so there's no shame in explaining myself. While all Haytham wasn't wrong about the other Matra not knowing my whereabouts, it's not because I've been assigned a morally dubious mission. Rather, I've chosen to exile myself. Huh? Exile yourself? A little while ago, I discovered that there was data missing in the Academia's project planning and development files. What little they did report clearly did not match the project's actual progress. As General Mahamatra, I had the responsibility and authority to request an audit. However, to my surprise, the person responsible for the erroneous data was none other than Grand Sage Azar himself. I tried to investigate the issue myself before submitting a formal audit request, but I soon found that all leads and potential pieces of incriminating evidence were carefully concealed from me. I began to realize that they were cautious of me from the very beginning. Unsurprisingly, the Grand Sage rejected my audit request as soon as the submission reached his desk. He even said to me, The power of the General Mahamatra is granted by the Sages. 
You have no right to judge us. Hmm. So they really are up to no good. I realized then that to the Grand Sage, the Matra are nothing more than tools for the Sages to assert and maintain their control over knowledge. The vows that we took, the principles that we strive to uphold, they are meaningless to the academia of today. I believed it would be wise to flee the academia before the sages had a chance to take action against me. This way, they can no longer see nor predict my actions. I will never give up on this investigation. There's no need for someone else to give me power or authority. Once I find the truth, I will administer judgment by my own name. Sino seems to have the same goal as us. We're all investigating the sages. Plus, now that he's no longer the General Mahamatra, he somehow feels a lot less scary. Well, Sino, if that's your story, then why did you see Alhatham as a target? When I was investigating the matter in the academia, I overheard a conversation between Alhatham and a sage. The sages asked you to investigate a blonde-haired traveler, do you dispute this, Alhatham? Uh, what? Like many parts of the project, this assignment was undocumented. Now throw in your suspicious behavior with the Divine Knowledge Capsule, and I think we deserve an explanation. Hmm. Yes. I was indeed tasked with investigating the Traveler. Alhatham! After all... The promised reward was so great that hardly any scholar could have refused. The sage told me, Once you've completed this assignment, I can give you a glimpse of divine knowledge. A most enticing offer. Unfortunately, those academics don't know me at all. Their words contained one key piece of information, namely that divine knowledge indeed exists. That gave me all I needed to know. From my perspective, the sages are far from trustworthy. Think about it. Isn't it a little strange they're so willing to share divine knowledge with anyone, even as a reward? So, I began my own investigation following the lead of the divine knowledge capsule. In the end, I realized my wisdom in committing to this rather than collaborating with the sages. Had I been less guarded, I probably would have ended up like that Einal Ahmar mercenary incapable of remaining sane for long enough to hold a conversation. You mean that the sages originally planned to dispose of you using one of those capsules that drive people insane? I'd already given up on the assignment by then. I only told the academia I was waiting in Port Ormos for you to appear so they wouldn't suspect anything. So it came as quite a surprise when I encountered my erstwhile target while investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Criminals do love to talk about coincidences. Even though I ran into the Traveler by chance, I had no intention of providing assistance to the Academia. Also, you should remember, you were the ones who decided to follow me and strike up a conversation after I left that tavern. true. Alhatham helped us out at Caravan Rebot as well. Maybe he's telling the truth. I'm willing to apologize if that's worth anything to you. I took the Divine Knowledge Capsule behind your back because I judged its existence to be a significant risk. I felt that it would be best for no one to interact with it before it had been properly studied. <laughs> After all, curiosity often proves to be the most dangerous thing in this land. You should be well aware, Scribe Alhatham, that curiosity can also lead you to danger and suspicion. Answer me this. Did the sages share any information about their project with you? Have I not made myself clear? You and I are both distrusted by the academia. Do you really think they would tell me anything? Fine. Although you haven't completely proven your innocence, 
I won't regard you as an enemy, for now. As you wish. Mm hmm Good. I'm glad to see you two clearing up your misunderstandings. And now you, Dia. I believe it's your turn. Oh, sorry. Whatever the boys were talking about must have been so boring that I spaced out. Ahem. <clears throat> My situation is pretty straightforward. My employer, Dunyarzad of the Homiyani family, is friends with the Traveler and is currently recovering from her illness at home. I had nothing going on, so I decided to return to Aru Village for a visit. I was actually looking forward to a pretty exciting time getting back together with everyone here. But then I saw these two random guys in the middle of a pointless argument. You take me off, and things went downhill from there. Is that all? Well... I will admit that definitely sounds like your style. In that case, welcome back, dear. That's more like it. I missed you all so much, Candace. Whoa! What was that sound? No need to worry. Now that you're no longer at each other's throats, please make yourselves at home. I'll take a quick trip outside to clear out some of those creatures in the sandstorm. C creatures In the sandstorm? Uh, are you sure you don't want some backup? Fighting in a sandstorm is not for the faint-hearted. Anyone without extensive training in these conditions is at a disadvantage. You needn't worry. Yeah, just leave them to Candace. <laughs> don't worry, she's as tough as they come. The wind's died down. That means the sandstorm's over, right? Candace still isn't back yet, though. Is she all right? Maybe we should go out and check on her. When you put it that way, even I'm starting to feel a little worried. All right, let's go. We've been here long enough, and the boys are as chatty as the floor. Yeah. 